I've enjoyed Kingdom Come Deliverance immensely and spent over 130 hours into the core game when it first came out. Back then it was a buggy mess and yet the good was so good that it made the experience a positive one. When the game ended with a cliffhanger I was a bit disappointed but also excited because I wanted to see a lot more of Henry's adventures. It's been quite a while since I've last played it and I had actually promised myself that I would not play the DLCs individually but I broke my promise and played the first two. I'm going to share my opinion of them here and also talk about the free tournament DLC. The first DLC is called From the Ashes. It revolves around rebuilding Pribislavets, a location which most players will remember if they have played through the main game. When people hear the word rebuild, they might imagine something like the building system in Fallout 4, but let me quickly clarify that it's nothing like that. You simply get to select ready structures from a list and they just appear if all requirements are fulfilled. If this sounds boring to you, it's probably because it kind of is. The DLC is clearly not designed to be played on its own, the prices of the buildings are extremely high at first, and even a wealthy thief, such as my character, quickly found himself out of funds. I can imagine that players who are still playing through the main story could afford to travel to the settlements from time to time and build something, but you have to also consider the salaries of your various workers on site. The buildings generate funds for you but far too little at first so it's up to the player to acquire coin and occasionally invest into the village. Unfortunately my character had finished all the missions available in the main story as well as everything that can be done in terms of side quests. There were no means to make money besides robbing shopkeepers off their hard earned cash. Not that that's a problem for me but traveling from town to town in order to rob people gets boring fast especially considering how long the loading screens during the travel segments last. Besides requiring of the player to grind a ton of money it is also a pain to actually build anything. You have to select the building which you want to build or upgrade. You have to follow the NPC which will then proceed to walk to the position on the building site before a small movie plays showing you how the town changes as the new building is being erected. I just hate having to follow slow NPCs in games. I've mentioned upgrades, some buildings will allow for upgrades and you can implement them. In a few cases, one upgrade will actually negate another so a choice has to be made. This extends to some of the buildings as well, for example you may end up with an armor or a weaponsmith based on that decision. You cannot have both. There are a few quests involving this DLC but they are really nothing special. Besides a few quests that involve fetching something, you do get the occasional arbitration of a minor conflict within your settlement. Two parties will argue and you will decide who is right. The issue with that is that I have not seen any consequences of those decisions whatsoever. No matter what you decide and no matter how angry one side ends up with your decision, nothing happens. It felt like these could have had some serious potential. It's really sad as well because it could have spiced things up if someone got really angry and tried to torch up one of your buildings or just started a riot and you get to calm the people down with some speech checks or perhaps with force if your skills and speech are not sufficient. Once you do manage to build the place up, it looks nice and will even provide you with a steady income, but on the other end, it's way up to the north of the map, so traveling there from Ratai is a very long journey. Something that annoyed me was that at one point it is said that all the refugees in Ratai can be transferred to your town and apparently most of them decide to move in. However, when you go to Ratai, you still see all of the refugees there. It's strange that they didn't adjust that. It feels lazy and kills part of the immersion. It's not that the refugees become less or you lose some of the famous faces and they appear in previous lives. It's, no, it's just all of them are there again and you just go and say hi to them. Nothing appears to change, although the narrative tells you that something has changed, but the pictures do not. This DLC was more tedious than fun for me. For players who have finished the main game and do not want to start a new one, this DLC might not be a good option simply because you will have to grind money in order to be able to advance. This would only be half as bad if you have lots of fun quests to play and grinding is only a side activity. The second DLC which I want to talk about is the free tournament DLC. It's free content so I wasn't expecting much but what baffled me was that the tournament arena was built up but talking to the Herald there only yielded the same answer. He kept telling me that I had to wait a few days for a new tournament to be announced before I could join. Even as I did this nothing seemed to happen so I went online and started reading about it. Usually Sir Capon should tell you about the tournament but since I had finished the main game Capon was not really starting the tournament for me. In that case one actually has to go to Samopesh and talk to the blacksmith there in order to start a quest 
and thus be able to participate in a tournament. This is a very bad solution for many reasons. The game should at least tell you that you somehow are supposed to go to Samopesh. There is no information whatsoever about this and it should simply not be this difficult to start the quest regarding this DLC. And as you finally manage to start it, you soon get a chance to participate in a tournament and it's a lot like what you would expect. You get to fight a few guys and at the end you get a reward if you manage to beat our opponents, that is. What is interesting here is that you get to fight using various weapons and shields. So unless your Henry is a multi-talent with all weapons, you will end up having a harder time than you had expected. As a reward for beating all the opponents though, I got a pair of very nice gauntlets and came to realize that they were part of a set. So I wanted to participate again in the next tournament in order to acquire another part of that set. Naturally I went and spoke to the Herald who gave me the same message about waiting for the next tournament to be announced in a few days. So I had no choice but to wait. As I was waiting something very minor regarding the quests, you know, the one that you take from Samopesh blacksmith happened. But that's all. I don't want to spoil anything, even if it is extremely minor, there's so little in terms of contents with this DLC that I will not tell you what happens. But you know, you'll get to see it yourself if you play it. After several in-game days of waiting, I had decided to consult the internet again. Waiting in Kingdom Come Deliverance involves looking at an extremely boring loading screen for a very long time. I had had enough of it and I wanted to know how long these few days that the Herald spoke of would really take. The funny thing is that you can never be certain. People agree that it takes about two in-game weeks at best, but it can take longer than that. In some cases it would never happen. I want to emphasize how much of a pain this is. You have to wait two in-game weeks and that takes forever. And then in some cases it takes even longer and it might not happen, that's just horrible. So again, just as I had mentioned before, you are best advised to only engage this if you are actually still playing through the story. That way time will pass more naturally and it won't be quite as bad. However, there is a catch. People have reported that once the next tournament is announced, the player has a very small window of opportunity to actually sign up for it. They say that it has to be done first thing in the morning of the in-game day. Otherwise you miss it and you have to wait again for the next tournament to be announced. Now imagine you are off in a quest uh, area somewhere north. Besides the fact that you would have to stop your quest abruptly, you might still not make it in time to sign up, simply because traveling takes time as well and that time can be quite you know, significant if you are really far away from Ratai. In conclusion, I want to say that this DLC is a very nice idea, but as with most things in Kingdom Come Deliverance, it seems to not be executed properly and will certainly need to be reworked before one can enjoy it fully. Since it's free, everyone should give it a shot in any case. As expected, I've saved the best for last. The Amorous Adventures of Bold Sir Hans Capon is definitely the best of the lot, simply because it revolves around a short but interesting campaign in which you help Sir Hans Capon on his quest to earn the heart of a fair maiden. For people who have played this game, the name Hans Capon will definitely bring back memories of rivalry and friendship. The character is written brilliantly and is one of the main reasons I have enjoyed this game as much as I did. Starting the quest is not a problem, you simply talk to Hans. You'd think that this would be obvious, but since the last two DLCs were designed so poorly when it comes to the actual quest that you need to begin at first, I thought I'd mention that this one is different. The quests are quite interesting and will also introduce the improved system of playing dice. Some of my previous weighted dice had disappeared for some reason, which I found a bit surprising, but the game quickly presented me with an ample option to steal even more fancy and unfair cheat dice, so I was quickly back to where I stood before. Naturally the quests offer multiple solutions which can be discovered, so different approaches can be effective giving you the possibility to replay this quest line if you wish using mods that reset quests. Naturally the quests are still quite buggy, but the bugs only affect non-essential content. At one part you infiltrate a band of bandits. You promised audience with your leader. Once the time came for me to be able to talk to him, he simply refused to start a conversation. He would just say some random line and continue walking around. So I never managed to talk to him and advance one of the subplots of the mission. I read online that I am not alone with this problem. At another instance I was in a fist fight and a few NPCs who were attacking me, which were part of the quest, uh, were just, you know, pounding at me and suddenly a guard appears and decides to constantly complain about the fact that I'm walking in the dark without a torch. He didn't seem to mind that a band of men was beating me up in front of his eyes. 
He was also not interested in the fact that the same band of vagabonds who were beating me up were also without torches. After following me around and reminding me of my torch duty, he had had enough of me and also joined in with the other guys and started beating the hell out of me. It's these kind of idiotic moments that make me laugh, but also can be very frustrating. Luckily in this particular case it was not, but you know, it's Kingdom Come Deliverance and these things happen. The DLC is enjoyable, but I wish there was more interaction with Sir Hans Capon. You only have him by your side at the end of the DLC, but as expected that short time is worth its weight in gold. I actually laughed at some of the things that happened and ended up reloading it in order to hear all the different lines you can have with him. And uh, I gotta tell you, it's just great, the comedic outcomes are excellent. Once that's done, you either help him conquer the woman of his dreams or not, but the reward above all is the journey itself rather than reaching the destination. My biggest criticism of this DLC is that it felt short to me. As with the previous ones, this problem will be countered more effectively if you play it at a lower level. My Henry is far too capable and thus every mission is simply much easier. He passes all speed checks with ease, he can pickpocket without worry of failure, he's a master swordsman, but also equally good at stealth assassinations. All of this will surely have an effect on how quickly I was going through the quests, but in all fairness, there aren't many to begin with. Be that as it may, I recommend this DLC above all others. It mixes a lot of humor, original quests, a dice tournament with new weighted dice and lots of bugs. Well, you know, the bugs are not a good thing, but they're in there as well. Everything that made Kingdom Come Deliverance the popular game it is today. I hope that this review has been entertaining and informative to you and I want to thank you for having watched it. Have a great day.